Last time on Pokemon Sun and Moon. We really have to drive our car, like, diagonally in here to get into the garage. That kind of stinks. Should have paid less for that house. Here's our first victim. Youngster Jimmy. Pichu? I don't know if that's a rare encounter in this grass. Maybe it's just uncommon. Modest nature. That's actually kind of interesting. I might look that up later. <laughs> Alolan Raichu was one of the Pokemon I had as, as one of my potentials. Victim number two. Preschooler Oliver. <laughs> We've reached a new low. We are now beating up preschoolers. Give me all your lunch money, kid. Come on. 48 bucks. Nice. Dude, I want my rock. You're probably always looking mad tiny, bro. Should work on that. You are about to see your grandson laid out. That's it? Just one battle? That's a pretty lame ceremony. No wonder why Tapu Koko never comes to visit. Yes, give me my rock back. Oh, you messed with it. Alright. I guess I'll forgive you. <laughs> Four islands! Kukui, I don't trust leaving you here. Not with my mom. Hopefully that Meowth will protect you from Professor Kukui. What's going on guys? Stevie here with Lucky Crit. and Welcome back to the third episode of our Pokemon Sun and Moon Let's Play. Last time we just finished beating up How. We got our Z-Ring back. And now Lily came over and she wants to take us to Professor Kukui's lab. So, let's continue along let's see what we've got here. So I think she wanted us to go down here. Wow, Lily wastes a lot of money on repels. So we're finally getting a little bit of backstory about Nebi or Cosmog, but she's not explaining yet why she actually stole Cosmog, so that'll be interesting to find out later on. Alright, so we haven't explored this area yet. Is that a trainer already? No. Oh, look at that. Here's the 7th gen version of a ledge. Let's not jump down that, though. So in the last episode, we managed to catch a Pichu with a modest nature. I'm still not 100% sure if that's going to be our Alolan Raichu or if we're going to go with the Vika Volt for our team, but it's going to be one of those two. Uh, I was looking for a Grubbin. I still haven't found a Grubbin just yet. But I think for the time being, I will train it and move along accordingly. All right, can we go for the quick Thundershock and finish him off in one go? We cannot. All right, I'm gonna have to switch out. All right, let's go for the peck to finish him off. Brought to my knees, ooh. Gonna take a little nap in the bed and heal up our Pichu so that we can continue to train it a little bit because it's kind of trailing behind uh, Yumi. So, catch it back up a little bit. Okay, so we got an awakening from Meowth, which is interesting. I don't know if that's a one-time thing, or it just happens the first time that you sleep in your bed. Okay. I wonder if it's a percent chance to happen. So I'm still looking for that grubbin. Wingle? Okay. The diversity on this first route alone is kind of interesting, actually. Let's Thundershock it. I don't think we're going to kill it. Might be able to catch it, though. Oh, so that didn't actually even... Sleeping in our bed didn't even heal our Pokemon. And we did kill it. Completely wrong on all aspects. Jeez. Do we have to talk to our mom to heal? Much better. So 
Still cannot wait to get this generic trainer look off of us. All right, we got ourselves a Wingle here. Let's try to catch it. So I think Thundershock's gonna be a little too much, so we're gonna switch. Let's go, what's base damage on Peck? Not very much, let's go Peck. It's not gonna be super effective, it's gonna be weak. Perfect. Definitely a very interesting variety of Pokemon, even on just this first route. I mean, it makes a lot of sense that there's a seagull on this route, but... We're in Hawaii, there should be seagulls everywhere, but... Uh, usually you're just used to seeing the, the, like, really, really generic stuff. Just a couple Pokemon in the grass, and we've already seen... Oh, this is our first breakout. Jerk. Come on, don't waste our Pokeballs. Thank you. I had a pretty wing, that's cool. Now I know those debuted in Generation 5, but I don't know what they do. Let's take a look at that. I'm actually not sure then. I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. I feel like we're getting really lucky so far during this playthrough. I had a 5% encounter rate for Pichu, and then I caught the Pichu and had a modest nature right off the bat. IVs were, you know, decent for an in-game playthrough. Pretty wing off of that wingle. We're doing pretty well. Watch, we're gonna find a shiny at some point. Just randomly. Okay, so there's a lot of wingles down here. I like that the different patches of grass on this route so far have different encounter rates because we weren't finding any wingles in the northern area, in the northern part of the route, in those patches of grass. So this is super cool. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna eliminate you. You are annoying me. Level seven on Pichu. I should just take the time right now to bring Pichu all the way up. So I might skip ahead to that. Slowpoke. Slowpoke is a little uh, specially defensive, so I think we can take. I think it could take a Thundershock. Let's find out. Yep. And we got the paralysis. Nice. We run out of Pokeballs yet? Almost. Gotta be careful about that. Don't wanna be finding shinies without any Pokeballs in our bag. That would be very, very bad. Okay. Alright, so we've got another trainer here, ready to battle. On the way to Kukui's lab. Let's eliminate her. Last Madison. This is gonna be nice. Okay, perfect. Let's thundershock the hell out of you. Nice one. Pichu is quickly catching up to Yumi. Very cool. What's over here? Okay, so this looks like his lab. There's the ledge there. Just gonna explore over here to the right before we actually take a look at what's going on there. Okay, so we'll definitely have to come back and visit here later once we can surf. There's Lily, and there's also another patch of grass over here. I'm going to avoid this for now because I don't want to encounter any shinies with like two Pokeballs left. I'm going to have to restock very, very soon here. All right. Kukui's lab is a little broken down. My body is ready. So they actually they actually quoted Reggie fils -A man That's interesting. Okay. Nice little Easter egg there. That's right, 
Kukui is the professor that studies moves, which uh, lines up correctly with what we were saying about him in the last episode. <laughs> better not be putting the moves on our mom. That's all I'm saying. Once we start our journey, once we're out of here, better keep his hands off. So he's got this kind of broken down shack out here on, by the beach. I guess that's pretty Hawaiian sounding. There's a stuffle. You're like play fighting next to the aquarium, dude. I'm gonna say really. <laughs> Because all the other gens didn't have Rotoms inside their Pokedexes. I'm glad we're actually getting like an explanation scene for this, as opposed to just, hey, here's a Pokedex that has Rotom in it. That's, this is better than that. Right. Very good. So I guess Rotom is kind of like our meow since it's going to be talking to us. Interesting. Now, are the eyes at the bottom screen the buttons to navigate through different menus? That would be sweet. Kind of like uh, from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, where you had the, the sort of buttons on your PokeWatch. That was cool. I still miss a lot of those apps that they had in those games, to be completely honest, where you could write down notes or count your footsteps. Like, the fact that they remove features like that as they continue along with these games, like, kind of upsets me. It does make every region unique, and I totally understand that, but in terms of, like, game design, they could make, like, such an incredible game if they just put, like, all of the best parts of every single region into one game. And uh, the multiple apps from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, I think, were awesome. One of the best things that we got for a bottom screen for a while. Thank you very much. Poor Hal gets none of the cool toys that we're getting. That's so that's so funny. We start off with jerk rivals in Generation 1 where they kind of take everything first and have it all themselves. Now we have such a kind of a lame rival in Hal who doesn't even get half the toys that we get to play with, which is kind of funny. And his Poplio is hella small. Challenge amulet. Okay, finally, how has at least one of those? Where can I buy Pokeballs? Okay, so here's our map. We can take a look at the surrounding areas. I do like this system here. Since there's multiple islands and multiple ways around. Do we not have access to anything else yet, though, in here? Okay. I guess his eyes don't flip between screens, unless we're just missing some of the screens in the very beginning of the game. Which would make sense, because we don't have stuff like Pokepelago or anything yet, so... It's down here. Oh, that's cool. Hello. Once again, I feel the paranoia about... Oh, actually, you know what? That's probably for Rotom, isn't it? Yeah. I feel the paranoia about items, but I don't think there's actually going to be any items down here, so... We will continue along. I do need to find a store with Pokeballs, though. That much is certain. 
Lily told us not to go in the loft, and now we've just gone in the loft. You know, I didn't mean to do that, but we just... <laughs> we just laid down in Lily's bed, which is kind of creepy. Okay. Let's get out of here. Can't be getting caught now, can we? Where's Pokebell go here? It's probably gonna be on that second page there. Ah, okay, so that's gonna be an entrance to 10 Carat Hill. We don't have access to that area yet because we need, I guess, a Tauros to smash those rocks. I guess we'll head back to civilization. Aha! First time entering a Pokemon Center in the official playthrough. Very nice. Alright, Lily, we know what we're doing. We'll also take a look at our PC box and uh, drop off some of those extra Pokemon that we caught. Start filling up that first box. Okay, that's interesting. So we got a little Starbucks in here as well. I like that. Very cool. Alright, so let's move around a couple Pokemon in here. We only have access to eight boxes now, but I'm guessing it's going to be like uh, X and Y, where the more boxes you fill, you will get more up to probably like 30, unless they give us more this time around. Not sure about that. Um, yeah, I guess we'll deposit Slowpoke too. We don't really need him. Let's make sure to buy some more Pokeballs. I think I want to buy 10 so I get that Premier Ball too, because that's going to be pretty sweet. Provided that still happens. Yes, okay, cool. Sounds good. We don't need any Moo Moo Milk or anything, so I'm gonna save it with that. Oh, look at that, we have access to Festival Plaza now. Okay. I'm gonna take a look at that for a minute. Do we only have access to this in, in Pokemon Centers? Very cool. So is that a real kid or is that a is that an NPC? Are there gonna be other people here? Alright, so, so far, Fortune 10 is definitely the most useless out of all the shops, but you just have to keep that in mind. Let's go get some more FC for these guys. Cannot wait to customize a character. Alright, rank 2. The sad thing that I don't like about all of these kind of features are years from now when they turn off the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection for like the 3DS systems and stuff, you're not going to be able to do any of this. In fact, it's really, really sad to me that you can go back to like black and white in those games and not be able to connect and battle on the internet anymore. I think I think that's kind of a shame, honestly. Like I completely understand it and I'm sure that they're just losing money by, by keeping those servers up, but 
all those cool features are now gone. Ghost in. Which one did he say? Let's go, let's go to Ghost Town. I think that's where the Pokemon finds items. I think these are just generic NPCs. It's like Disney World for Pokemon. I guess we'll try to have Yumi navigate through this ghost trick room. Stone. Okay. Two hard stones. Iron. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, so that was cool. Let's continue along. Don't mind the Tauros that might be running down the road, killing people, mauling them. Just ignore that and we'll go to school. That place is cool. EXP share already, okay. It seems like that's really early. Alright. I definitely like the environment here, that's pretty cool. Nice potion. And just in case there's anything else around the back. What are you doing? Youth athlete, okay. Used a great ball on that pick a pick. You definitely have some learning to do. No, for Astonish. Hmm. 
I'm not sure that would be fast enough uh, in order to get that off before the opponent moves. Are you supposed to be back here already? Apparently we're supposed to be in school right now, but we're playing hooky. And we're beating up kids in the back alley. Not sure that this is going to do a lot, but... Okay, that's a fair amount. I was fully expecting him to use Harden. One more. We're just gonna make it. We got the paralyzed though, nice. grass here, I wonder. Magnemite. Okay. That's cool. If I didn't already have plans for an Alolan Raichu or for a Vika Volt, I might have honestly went with that, but... Not this playthrough. Should probably switch. I gotta be hopeful though that he doesn't go for the thunder shock because that's gonna hurt. Okay, tackle. That's fine. And he critted that tackle too. Let's go for the stab leafage. There's that thunder shock. Okay, actually, it's not super effective. Got ourselves a Magnemite. I like that you get to see the Pokedex entry right when you catch the Pokemon and it registers. Because usually there would be a lot of dex entries that you didn't bother to go in there and read, so this way you're going to see like pretty much the dex entry for everything that you catch, which is nice. I'm going to go heal up, and uh, we can continue exploring this patch of grass, and then get to the inside of the school and actually deal with that whole scenario. Alright, time to go to school. You can only play hooky for so long. Time to beat up another preschooler. Bonsly, okay. Interesting. I wonder if uh, Suda Wudo is actually in the regional decks for Alola. I gotta say, too, the animations are on point in this game. I like them a lot better than we've seen uh, in recent games. Very nice. Some of them just make a lot more sense than some of the older ones that we got before for certain moves. Alright. 
That preschooler actually put up a fight. Am I supposed to be talking to you? Those supposed to be cubbies? Nice. All right. Definitely giving that to Yumi. Because as far as I remember, the speed stat on... Uh, the speed stat on Decidueye is not that great, so... We got two hard stones in here. I'll have to give that when we get a Pokemon with a rock move. Probably Rock Ruff. Probably end up giving that to Rock Ruff or maybe Minior. What's in this classroom here? Are we learning with the preschoolers today? Okay, so this is your stereotypical type weaknesses on the board. A lot prettier than past generations, though. I guess we're going upstairs. Let's, okay, that's that goes outside. I think we're ready for graduation. We didn't do any homework, but we're ready. What are you? That slowpoke looks like he's doing his business in the corner with this guy's watch. <laughs> Creepy dude. You're in a public school, man. That's the computer lab. That's pretty cool. Aside from the dude in the corner. <sighs> you guys are not giving me helpful tips. I just want your free items and your money. Like that. I guess maybe I have to beat up that kid outside before we, uh... Before we can graduate. Maybe there was more to that patch of grass over there that I, than I thought. All right, here we go. What trainer class are you? Rising star. Okay. Oh, Grimer, Alolan Grimer, nice. I like Alolan Grimer and Alolan Muck. I just wish that Muck was like oil slick, like a little bit more realistically colored oil slick and not some weird, uh... The explanation that they went with for Muck I, d I didn't really like too much. I think the fact that it was dark poison was perfect if it had been oil, something like that, some kind of like oil deposit that it got into or something. That would have been sweet. I do like the green Grimer though. Okay, so we're just going to chip away at him here. He's going for the pound. That actually kind of hurt. He goes for the pound again. We might have to switch out if this does too much. Yep. Going to take Pichu out and send in Yumi. We have to be very careful because he's... Yeah. Is that going to poison us? Yep. Alright, so we've been hit with some poison. I think I'm gonna go for... Leaf is just not gonna do much because he's poison type and poison resist grass. We're gonna go for the peck, I think, because we're gonna get the stab off the peck, even though it's not the greatest uh, base power. All right. Oh, and he goes for the hardened, okay. I like that he gets slower after he uses hardened. His animation slows down a little bit, but he's also dying, I think, so that's why. But that would make more sense. Alright, finished him off. Definitely a cool Pokemon. I think that's what I like the most about the Alola forms, is just breathing that new life into those old Pokemon. And in some cases, making them better. I do wish they had, like, base stat improvements, though. But what are you gonna do?
Our first TM. Work up. Yeah, Rising Star, Joseph, we know. We've been around the block a couple times. Do we have to go back to class? Uh, we can send to the principal's office. Well... Yeah. Anyway, that's where we're going to have to leave off today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this episode of our Sun and Moon Let's Play. Please be sure to let me know in the comment section down below what Pokemon will be in your Sun and Moon team. Uh, you probably already have your team set up because I'm a little bit behind in playing through this game. But be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And slash that thumbs up if you liked this episode. And I'll see you guys in the next one.